First Impact, now Ring of Honor, I tell you, man, Tempest doesn't sleep as long as there's wrestling on. What's going on, WrestleTalk friends and fans? Tempest is back with a review of Ring of Honor's Final Battle 2021 in about eight minutes or so? Let's try for eight minutes. So obviously, with everything that's going on with Ring of Honor right now, this show felt like it had a real sense of finality to it. That played into all the video promos, all the matches throughout the show, and this show opened with a six-man tag team championship match as The Righteous took on Shane Taylor Promotions. And this match was all right. It was the opener, so it wasn't designed to steal the show, but everyone was working hard. Unfortunately, as we got in towards the finishing sequence, O'Shea Edwards hit a big top rope moonsault for a near fall, but the bell rang and it really did put a dent in the momentum the match was having to that point. The guys kept going, but the fans kind of lost interest at that point, and Vincent eventually hit the orange sunshine for the win, capturing the ROH six-man tag team titles for the righteous. Again, this match was fine, but if you take out the miscommunication at the end, this match would have been a whole lot better. It gets a three out of five. We then got a six-woman tag team match as the Hex and Chelsea Green took on the Allure and Miranda Elise. This match wasn't very long, only going about six and a half minutes and there were a lot of really rough parts in it as well. Miranda Elise did have a solid showing in this match, but there were a lot of mistimed spots and things that just didn't flow as smoothly as you would have liked, and that culminated with the finish as Mandy Leon went for a pump handle slam where she needed her opponent to hand her her arm between her own legs, and just it just didn't work. After the match, all the women involved hugged each other, although Allison Kay didn't look like she was having a very good time with that. This match was not very good, I'll be perfectly honest. I'm giving it a 1 out of 5. We then had a 10-man tag team match to get everyone on the show as PJ Black, Flip Gordon, Cheeseburger, and the Bouncers took on Max the Impaler, Sledge, Will Ferrara, LSG, and Demonic Flamita. This match was essentially a series of high spots to make sure everyone got on the card, although there were a number of standouts in this match, including Max the Impaler, who really took to Brian Malonis, hitting a bunch of Vader style forearms in the corner. The most enjoyable part of this match probably did come from the high flying guys like Flip Gordon, PJ Black, and Flamita, who were involved in the finish as they hit a huge Doomsday Destroyer on Flamita for the win. This was among the craziest Canadian destroyers I've ever seen, and a tremendous tremendous way to cap off this match, which capped off the first hour of Final Battle, which aired on YouTube, setting up the pay-per-view and giving fans a reason to buy it. This match was fun, I'm giving it a 3 out of 5. We then opened the main show with Ray Horace taking on Dragon Lee. Ring of Honor has always been built on the back of excellent in-ring work, and these two guys perfectly exemplified that with an excellent opening match for the pay-per-view. Not just fun high spots and crazy lucha sequences, this match was really, really solid with excellent technical work from two of Ring of Honor's best workers post-pandemic. It's no secret how great these two guys are. They should have absolutely no trouble finding work with Ring of Honor closing, and this match was ultimately won by Dragon Lee hitting a big incinerator on Ray Horus for the win. They also played up that Dragon Lee had never lost to Ray Horus in their entire careers, going a perfect 8-0 against him, and to me, that is stats working in pro wrestling, because it adds so much more to this story if you're not familiar with it. This was a perfect way to open up this show. I'm giving this a 5 out of 5. We then had the Four Corners Survival Match for the ROH Television Championship as Dalton Castle defended the title against Silas Young, Rhett Titus, and Joe Hendry. Joe Hendry's music is so awesome. It has been stuck in my head for about three hours. I believe in Joe Hendry. This was a pretty fun match, although the four-way aspect didn't really play into things that much, as it was very much a two-in, two-out, switch-and-swap kind of match. Dalton Castle spent the majority of the early goings of this match parading around the ring and accepting praise from his band of merry men, while the other three took turns wrestling. Eventually, the pace did pick up, but there was a really bad ref bump. They didn't even come close to making contact with him, and it looked really contrived. Much like the bell ringing in the earlier match, this does take it down a peg. Ultimately, Rhett Titus was able to get the win with a big standing drop kick on Silas Young, and he got a huge You Deserve It chant afterwards, but again, mistakes are costly. This was fun though, I'll give it a 3 out of 5. Following that, we had the Ring of Honor Pure Championship match as Brian Johnson took on Josh Woods. Now most people either kind of love or hate the Ring of Honor Pure rules as they are kind of gimmicky, but they do offer something new to these kind of matches that you don't get anywhere else. Brian Johnson showed a ton of fire in this match match and did everything that he could to win, even taking off the turnbuckle and then hitting a brass knuck shot behind the ref's back for a near fall. Ultimately, just wasn't enough. Each guy only gets three rope breaks in these kind of matches, and that did play into the finish as Brian Johnson used up his three rope breaks very early, and then by the time he got to the third one, Josh Woods was able to choke him out in the ropes for the submission. I did enjoy this match. It went just under 13 minutes. I'm giving this a thumbs up and a four out of five. We then got the highly anticipated fight without honor between Shane Taylor and Kenny King. This was easily the most violent and terrifying match on the whole show. There'd been a lot of talk that these guys were planning a lot of really big spots, and boy, they sure did, 
didn't they? I mean, very early into the match, these guys were going through double tables and doing blockbusters to the floor. This was the start of the match, mind you, and it kept building from there. As soon as they started setting up ladder bridges, I knew this was trouble. They set up a ladder contraption bridge thing in the ring, and Kenny King jumped off of it onto Shane Taylor for a near fall. That was scary, but not the scariest thing in this match. No, not by a long shot. No, that moment instead came when they were wrestling on a ladder bridge at ringside where Shane Taylor needed ring attendants to come and hold up his side of the ladder because it was just wobbling too much. Oh, my heart was in my throat. This was so terrifying. But as they got into the spot, Shane Taylor picked up Kenny King for a package pile driver jumped up and that ladder just went. They went straight to the floor and oh my God, this was sickening. After Kenny King kicked out, he told Shane Taylor to hit him with a chair, which Shane Taylor did and then hit another package pile driver on the chair for the win. If you like violent spots, this is the match for you. It's impossible not to get into something like this just because, oh my God, look at the wreckage. After the match, the two guys embraced and Shane Taylor put a baseball jersey around Kenny King, which is funny to me after what we just went through, but given the history these two guys have, I'll let it slide. This gets a four out of five, it was very fun. Next up we had the ROH Women's World Championship match as Roxy took on Willow. These women were put in a rough spot having to follow that insane match, but I thought these two women really rose to the occasion. Considering how new this title is, they haven't had a chance to really establish the Ring of Honor Women's Division, but if Ring of Honor was to continue on, this is the kind of match that would really help get people involved. The people really ended up getting into Willow in this match and kind of turned on Roxy by the end. There were some fun spots through the early goings of this match, but once they got into the big strike sequence about halfway through, that's where this match really got going. Willow was able to counter a code rock into a belly to back pile driver and i thought that was the finish that was an excellent near fall and eventually roxy was able to hit the code rock for the win after the match diana perrazzo made a surprise appearance coming out with the triple a women's title and saying that she wanted the ring of honor women's championship and she's gonna beat mickey james for the impact knockouts championship at hard to kill and afterwards she wants roxy both titles on the line i have no idea where or when that's gonna happen but it looks like we're getting that match so that's a big thumbs up between the match and diana's appearance this was one of the better things on the show make sure you go out of your way to watch it if you didn't see this pay-per-view this gets a four out of five we then had the roh appreciation match as violence unlimited and rocky romero took on ec3 and the foundation now there was more to this match than just this sequence but the biggest takeaway from this match was all eight guys just ran through all the old roh finishers we were getting finishers from cm punk brian danielson jerry lynn kenta Brian Kendrick, Nigel McGuinness, the list goes on and on and on. It was really, really cool. Obviously, everyone involved in this match is extremely talented, but I definitely want to highlight the work of Tony Deppen. I think he's come a long way as a great technical wrestler in the last few years, and I hope he continues to get work. Ultimately, the match was won by Violence Unlimited as Brody King hit a big gonzo bomb for the win, but that was not the biggest thing to come out of this match. No, 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 sir. No, no, that came after the match as EC3 got on the mic and cut a promo on Eli Isom, Brian Johnson, and Dak Draper, saying that corporate wrestling wrestling has ruined everything and that they together can take back wrestling for themselves. This was a pretty standard promo so far, but EC3 said that these men needed to suffer for him if they were going to learn, and he said to release the Titan. This was followed by the shocking, unbelievable, unexpected debut of Wesley Blake and Braun Strowman. I was not expecting to see Braun Strowman in Ring of Honor anytime soon, I gotta be honest. As a debut, I mean, this was fine. Big guy comes out and beats up all the guys smaller than him, but I don't really know where this is gonna lead, given the fact that Ring of Honor basically doesn't exist right now. The match itself was really fun, especially for someone who watched a lot of Ring of Honor and really appreciated the amount of detail put into this match. Good match, kind of a weird promo. I'm giving all this a three out of five. We then had the ROH World Tag Team Championship match as the OGK defended the titles against the Briscoes. Now, I gotta say, this was easily the best match match on the show. Ring of Honor has very often been associated with excellent tag team wrestling and that is in no small part to both of these teams but in particular the Briscoes. Having the Briscoes in a tag team championship match on this show was just perfect. It was absolutely perfect. There's no other tag team that should have been involved in the tag team championship match on potentially Ring of Honor's last show. Maria Kanellis Bennett also accompanied the OGK to the ring and ended up getting speared by her husband Mike Bennett on the apron I mean, they've had trouble before. They've they've worked it out. They're fine, right? They're fine. There were so many highlight reel moves in this match. The OGK hit an incredible suicide dive doomsday device. That was probably the craziest doomsday device I've ever seen. The OGK managed to hit the Hail Mary on Mark Briscoe for a near fall, but Jay was able to break it up. And then the Briscoes just took over, sending Mike Bennett to the outside and hitting a parade of finishers on Matt Taven for the win. The Briscoes managed to capture the ROH World Tag Team Championships for a record 12th time, and there's no 
better way for those titles to go out than around the waist of the Briscoes. After the match, they said that this was not the end of the Briscoes and that any tag team that wanted some could step up to them. And then the lights went out, came back on, and say yeah. It was FTR. These two teams fit each other like a glove, and I've been hoping to see this match since FTR left WWE. They started brawling, and this was a violent brawl too. Dax Harwood attacked a cameraman, and they were getting some serious boos as Ring of Honor was like trying to cut away and lead to the next match. From start to end, this whole segment was the best thing on the show by far. This gets a five out of five. If I could give it more, I would. Granted, I gave Hook's debut a 10 out of five, but you know. Forget about that. It should also be noted that scattered throughout this show were a series of thank yous sent in by ROH alumni now working for Impact and AEW. We got videos from Eddie Edwards, Hangman Page, Adam Cole, The Young Bucks, CM Punk, and ultimately Brian Danielson as they all thanked Ring of Honor and reminisced about their time in the company. Given that these were the first ROH appearances by basically everyone I just named since their respective departures, it was pretty cool to see on potentially the last show the likes of a Brian Danielson or a CM Punk or a Young Bucks a young bucks no that's not right regardless it was very cool to see them included in this show and then finally we had the main event match for the original roh world championship as jonathan gresham took on jay lethal these two guys know each other so well and honestly given ring of honor's current crop of talent i can't really think of two better guys to close out potentially their final show these two guys are absolute ring generals and total technical masters of wrestling and jonathan gresham has been one of the most dedicated ring of honor performers of the last few years and getting to see his day in the sun is very very inspiring both guys struggled to get the advantage early on but Jonathan Gresham was eventually to make that stride as he hit a series of bayonets on Jay Lethal and eventually locked in the octopus hold for the submission win capturing the ROH world championship with the entire ring of honor locker room at ringside they went off the air pretty quickly after the match and the match was a little bit shorter than I was expecting I think they were really rushing to make sure that the show got off the air by 11 and that does take it down a bit in my opinion the match itself for what it was was great but if they were able to go another five or ten minutes I think this could have been match of the night as it stands it was still a very good world championship match to cap off the end of an era of ring of honor with jonathan gresham holding the title as he probably should for a long period of time now this match was really fun it gets a four out of five and overall i'm giving a four out of five to the whole show as well if that was the end of ring of honor that was one of their better shows in a while and an excellent way to cap off a pretty stellar run by the company over the last 20 years shout out to samoa joe versus kenta kabashi still one of my favorite matches of all time and that just about wraps it up for me make sure you let us know in the comments what you thought of final battle and let us know your favorite ring of honor match of all time as well i've been tempest and liw is still fine